Hello everyone, this is Nick from Carillon Audio Blog in Brutobello. I wanted to share this with you. This is a La uh, Launchpad X um, control surface which has been ported over to the Ableton Push 1. Natively, the Ableton Push is not really supported just as a dumb, it just works as a dumb controller for Logic uh, and it takes a lot of setup to get it going, but the launch aspect of it all of the clips with the new Ableton or with the uh, Logic Live loops are not supported so I took the Launchpad X um, control surface and I utilized MIDI pipe which is a program to um, bring the the bring the control messages from the push and and they would go into MIDI pipe and from MIDI pipe to Logic, and Logic thinks that a Launchpad X is out here in the physical realm. Of course it's not. But these pads right here represent the pads on the Launchpad X, and this 8x8 grid is exactly like the 8x8 grid on the Launchpad X. So, you know, you can navigate and do various stuff. But I've added, with all of these extra buttons, I've added some extra features which allow the uh, push to do some really cool stuff. So I'm going to show you what I've done inside of MIDI pipe and then I'm also going to show you what I've done inside of Logic to get everything mapped up. So hopefully this is useful to you. Let's uh, let's dive in. Alright, so here we are inside of Logic. Let me just show you how everything's kind of built. Uh, let's start with MIDI pipe because essentially this is working as an intermediary between the hardware and the software. And what we've got going on is many different what they call pipes in here. And each one of these pipes is essentially a little processor that processes MIDI data. So let's start with the input. So here's coming in from row one, column one right here, this pad. We're selecting the Ableton user port. We're mapping all of the keys, and what I've done is I've uh, all of the keys that are coming in, all of the notes, because these send notes here, they're all being muted except for this one pad, and that one pad is then being remapped to key number 11. So from 92, which is what is being sent from the push, it's coming out as 11 every time it gets pushed. We're filtering all the other messages, so the only thing that's passing through is our notes. None of our aftertouch, none of our program changes, controller messages, all of that stuff that comes from these other pads. Um, I've got this A-list thing, it's just something that allows me to see that every time I push that, pad 11 is uh, on and off, or B0, note B0. And then it's going out MIDI pipe output 2, sending that out and that goes into Logic over here. Let me show you what Logic is doing. So Logic, here's our setup. I've just installed the basic um, Launchpad X and I made sure that the ports are being correctly mod or, uh, sent. So the input is coming from MIDI Pipe 2 here, going in, and it's going out MIDI Pipe 1. Let's jump back over to MIDI pipe. So I built individual ones for every single button on this on this here, all eight, all 64. Those are the ones coming in from the push and they're going into logic. Then I had to decode that message from logic back into the push. So when logic is seeing uh, MIDI pipe one messages, and the key is coming back and all again all of these keys are muted except for key number 11 B0 is coming out and sending I had to translate that back into number 92 which is actually what this pad is receiving so that pad receives and sends messages on key 92 G, G sharp 7 but the lot the launch pad is looking for B0 so hopefully that makes sense. It gets translated on the way in and then gets retranslated on the way out. And I did the same for these pads over here, um, which were a little bit more complicated because they are uh, 
not MIDI notes, but actually MIDI CCs. Then probably the coolest thing that I'll show you here is all of this stuff up here. So to utilize these knobs and these extra buttons, I wanted to create some extra uh, feature sets to this. And MIDI pipe allows you to do some really cool stuff. So let me go here, let me push the volume one. And there's a pipe within MIDI pipe here that when I push that button, whoops, uh, from Ableton push, I'm pushing that button 114, it's gonna do a few things. It's gonna trigger a SysX message that I've configured that sends the SysX message to turn all of these LCD um, letters into this to say volume one, volume two, so that it's easy for me to know what's happening over here. Okay, um, and then I also have each of these other ones doing the same type of thing. If I want to control the volume, I press volume. It actually within Logic, it'll pop open the mixer, which is great, so I can see that. If I want to control the pans, I hit pans, and as you can see, all the sysx sysx message has sent it, so I know that these are now controlling pans, and I can control the pan of instrument eight. Uh, if I want to control the device, you know, it's a device, so let's get back into our device mode here. Right, you can see I have to push it a few times because it has to turn on and off the uh, device mode. Uh, now this is controlling the device, so I can control all of these smart knobs here. So all of this is extra stuff that I built into on top of this because Logic allows you to have these sort of modes and different sorts of things. Um, so that's how the knobs work. Um, let me pop open Logic so you can see what that looks like here. So our controller assignments, what's happening is when I'm in volume mode, each one of these um, move this a little bit more on the screen. Each one of those pots from the Ableton uh, push is getting sent in and it's saying when you're in volume mode, when this is pushed, that's going to control volume one through eight. When you're in pan mode, when I push the pan, it's going to control pan one through eight. And when I'm in device mode, it's going to control smart knobs one through eight. Okay. I also have it so that when I push it, it opens and sh closes the smart control, um, you know, little pet, um, whatever you call this little panel. So that's how I have essentially these controlling multiple different things depending on which mode I'm in. If I'm in pan mode, volume mode, device mode, etc. Uh, I've got this all set up on a, with a couple different things. When I'm in clip mode. What the clip mode does is pop open the clip player and these all launch clips and everything like that. I can go to double mode, which is one of the modes that uh, is built into the Launchpad X. So any pad that you select will double that uh, pad length um, or delete mode. And as you can see, when I push these, it's sending a sysx message to let me know I'm in a different mode over here. So these, these have a different mode. Uh, there's a quantize mode. Uh, which I've added some some things that, that these buttons now do. Uh, and I think that's basically the different mode changes, uh, except for I've got mute mode, so these buttons become my mute buttons for each of the eight channels. Solo mode, um, those solo my eight channels, etc. Then I have the third row here in the push which actually correlates to this row of buttons. Sorry about these little stickers. These row of buttons right here correlate to this third row. So if I want to copy, paste, select to the left or right, split a clip, delete a clip, insert a MIDI clip, or insert a drummer clip, I can do that. That's my, that's my track mode, you see. If I want to go to shift, I have a shift mode set up where press the shift button and it goes into a different mode. So now these same buttons have different features. And again, that's something that's set up in Logic because it has this modality where you can be in one mode and buttons eight, uh, one through eight do certain thing. If you're in mode B, 
they'll do a different thing. So it's a great way to utilize uh, a single piece of hardware to have multiple different uh, things that it can do. And again, each time I'm pushing any of these buttons, that's sending out a message, a sysx message to the Ableton push so that the screen is telling me something so that I know what I'm actually doing or what mode I'm in. Um, as well as some, some other basic things have been built in. I've set up the tap tempo and the metronome, the undo feature, all of these things, the play button, all of that stuff is set up to basically do everything um, that this would do in Ableton. The only thing that it doesn't do that I wish it could is um, the step sequencer like Ableton does, but can't always have everything you want. So maybe that'll be built into some of the hardware devices in the future. I'd love if the push itself was um, supported by Logic, but it's just not quite there. But this is really close, um, and I'm hoping that I dial it in even a little bit more over time. But anyway, hopefully that helps you understand how Logic is working with uh, control surfaces, how you might be able to use MIDI pipe to morph those messages into something that you want, or to send messages to your hardware directly so that you have a sysx message or something that gets triggered whenever a button is pushed. And again, it, it's all working. You've got the hardware, you've got MIDI pipe, and then you've got logic. And then same when it goes reverse. When it leaves logic, it goes to MIDI pipe and then back to the push. So MIDI pipe is really this intermediary that's translating everything, which allows all of this extra functionality which is pretty sweet, I gotta say, because I was looking at getting a Launchpad X just to launch clips, and I said, hey, I've got this great push sitting there. Why don't I just use that? So again, hopefully this is helpful to you and inspires you to use some of your hardware in some new interesting ways to make music. Again, I'm Nick from Carolina Audio and Bruto Bello. Thanks for watching. Have a great one. Bye.